So I'm always trying to stay on top of the latest game releases, but this time I was determined to go the extra mile. I was going to check out the animation in as many 2021 games as possible. What a good idea, January 2021 me thought to himself. This'll make that end of the year game animation roundup video so much more thorough and probably easier to make. What a good, good idea. No, it turns out that looking at the animation in so many 2021 games has in fact made this the hardest roundup video to write yet, because now I am cursed with the knowledge of how many games could potentially be included in this list and narrowing it down has been a nightmare. But since I can't go back and unsee all of these games, I guess I'm just gonna have to try to squeeze in as many as I can. Here is a list of some 2021 games that had some great animation in them. And just to keep things halfway organized, let's try to lump these into categories. First up... Let's kick things off with the games that I've basically already covered by association. Starting with Guilty Gear Strive. I have already sung the praises of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus and Dragon Ball Fighters, and I have an entire video dedicated to breaking down this faux 2D animation style slash magic trick this studio has become known for. Still, I love the confidence on display here. The animation is still crafted to imitate the look of 2D sprites, but this more dynamic approach to lighting and shading these characters suggests to me that they aren't really trying to trick you into thinking you're looking at 2D animation anymore. They've already proven they can do that. Now they can just focus on combining the strengths of 2D and 3D to give Guilty Gear a hybrid look all of its own, and it still looks amazing. Then we have Monster Hunter Rise. I honestly do not know what to say that I have not already said about Monster Hunter World and Iceborne. I guess I could mention that these two palicos are drumming in time to the actual area music, and the fact that somebody went to the trouble to make that background detail functionally work just makes me very happy. But yeah, Monster Hunter continues to have some of the most inventive and appealing boss creature animation in the business, and the rest of the animation is loaded with both functional style and goofy, completely unnecessary charm in equal measure, which is why they will probably keep showing up in these videos. Then we have Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission. This incarnation of Yuffie is pitch perfect. I love how expressive she is, her combat animation looks great, and her traversal has all of these wonderful character touches that set her apart from the rest of the playable cast. But I already talked about Final Fantasy VII Remake last year, there's more of this remake coming later, and I'm eventually gonna have to cover this game's animation in depth for that Final Fantasy series I'm doing anyway, so let's just move on to... I'm kind of used to gorgeous hand-drawn animation being something of a rare treat in games, so I really was not prepared for the quantity 2021 had to offer, and from so many different countries. From Brazil, we've got Dodgeball Academia, a dodgeball RPG that is basically a shonen sports anime and I cannot look at it without smiling. I love the range of different personalities on display, I really love all the way those personalities get expressed on the court. Even just that little additive bob on the characters when they talk is such a fantastic little touch. Behind the Frame is a small but beautiful little narrative puzzle game from a team out in Taiwan. The game is obviously not aspiring to nearly the complexity or quantity of character animation in a Ghibli film, but it does still manage to capture that uniquely Studio Ghibli vibe of cozy mundanity, immediately grounding you with just a few tiny but lovingly observed and animated details from this painter's routine. Tohu, meanwhile, is a point-and-click adventure from a team based in Poland. In this game, you play a troll girl thing who lives on a giant fish and can turn into a robot. And you must figure out how to solve puzzles that basically operate on Wonderland logic. It's adorable, and a lot of that whimsical charm is largely thanks to both the character and the environment animation. It really captures that old-school kids' adventure game energy where half of the fun is just clicking on something to see what sort of animated weirdness will happen. Then, from Russia, we've got They Always Run, a 2D action platformer with some really stylish traversal and combat animation. 
this character's movement feels exactly right for this sci-fi western bounty hunter genre thing they're going for, especially in combination with the dynamic lighting on these character sprites. Stringing together a bunch of flashy counterattacks in this game will make you feel extremely cool. But the 2D game animation that grabbed me the most this year belonged to Chicory, A Colorful Tale. I was surprised to see how streamlined the animation in this game actually was when I went back to study it. Even when all a given character has is just one or two simple animation loops, which does appear to be the case for a surprising number of these characters, at no point do any of them feel like they lack expressiveness. Those animation loops do everything they need to. The motion complements their design and gives you an instant impression of them. And when the game does need to pull out all the stops for some big moment, that animation looks fantastic too. Chicory is just a great example of a game knowing exactly what does and doesn't need custom animation, and not wasting the effort where it won't benefit the experience. My full compliments to the animator. Awesome work. And technically we're not even out of the 2D category yet because now it's time to talk about... As usual, the indie scene is not only keeping us well-fed, but also continuing to prove just how much aesthetic range there is to explore within this retro-inspired art form. For example, Mighty Goose is a chaotically silly run-and-gun, and the blend of retro style with modern enhancements works so well. The explosions are punched up with full-screen distortions and chromatic aberration effects. The bosses and the vehicles are all constructed of these independently shuddering pieces that lend them even more mechanical cartoon texture. Your goose's sprite warps slightly with each jump, a little bit of squash and stretch that makes its motion around the screen all the more appealing. And come on, just look at that run. Eastward, meanwhile, is a much less chaotic but still gorgeous love letter to old-school JRPG and adventure games. The first thing to grab your attention will probably be the environment art. Actually, it'll probably be that traditionally animated intro, but once the character animation manages to get a word in, there is a lot to like. This game has so many characters, and they have so many interesting walks and idols and gestures. It's an impressive quantity of subtle detail, and it had my focus so zoomed in that the surprise moments of larger spectacle genuinely caught me off guard. This game is just a real visual treat, and I'm very, very curious to see what the folks at Pixpill will go on to make next. Also, there's Webbed, a physics-based platformer with a pixel art style and animation cute enough to, at least temporarily, cure arachnophobia. I mean, do you hate spiders? Not this one you don't. See? Look at her go. Look at those little legs. There's a dance button. You can dance at any time. Look. Look at the dance. I just really need all of you to see how cute this game is. But there was one showcase of fantastic pixel animation to see this year that very nearly slipped under my radar completely, and that was Steel Assault. There are a lot of pixel art games that try to replicate the look of retro classics, but it's pretty rare to see one manage to so perfectly capture the essence of those classics, to the point that I could have very easily been convinced that this was a re-release of some forgotten retro gem and not a game that literally came out less than a year ago. The character animation is great, the background animation is gorgeous, some of these bosses are pushing alarmingly close to Metal Slug territory. It's just a beautiful looking game. And also hard as nails, I wish I was good enough at it to see more of the animation. I have instantly gone from never having heard of Zenobia Interactive to being very excited to find out what else they might have up their sleeves. But now let's move on to a category that I didn't expect to need because I don't know where else to put these. The first uncategorizable entry is The Artful Escape, which I guess is mostly 3D character animation if you really want to be technical about it, but thanks to the way everything is staged, I cannot for the life of me tell where the 3D ends and the 2D begins. The character hands are definitely 3D, I can tell you that much for sure, but as for the rest, I don't know. All I can tell you is that I have never seen anything that looks quite like it, and I'm always a sucker for art and animation with a flavor this unique. 
I also feel like WarioWare Get It Together is worth mentioning in this hybrid category. And not even because the animation in the game is incredible in some exciting new way, I'm just fascinated trying to imagine how this gets made. The game just bombards you with every kind of animated imagery so fast that you don't even have time to fully recognize just how bonkers any individual element is before it's gone. Like, just try to process all the different moving things on each of these screens before the scene changes. Here are some noses walking on mustache hair. Someone had that idea, and then an animator went and figured out how noses should walk on mustache hair. This one's wearing a crown and dancing. And that's just one, one element on screen for like four seconds. I cannot imagine what working on this game is like, but I'm definitely impressed. But let's move on to our next and much more AAA category. Narrowing this category down is always a challenge, especially knowing just how many intimidatingly skilled artists and engineers it takes to create animation like this. For example, Deathloop has some really entertaining moments of first-person hand animation that wonderfully complement Jason E. Kelly's voice work. Uh, ah, I just dropped myself. What kind of the world is this? Ah! Why would someone put this? Whoa! Wow! Wow! Okay. What is this supposed to? <laughs> ah, it's cold and weird. Those are some great line reads, and the hand animation is only making them better. Guardians of the Galaxy has some surprisingly charismatic performances that completely caught me off guard. I really did not expect this new iteration of these characters to capture that familiar ensemble dynamic so well. And for all of the flack they sometimes get, the annual crop of big AAA sports titles is always built on some really impressive animation tech. Just thinking about the problem of how to animate the precise chaos of a full field of simulated players realistically colliding and blocking and tackling each other in a way that looks remotely correct to a football fan makes me start to feel a little dizzy. But there were a few standout examples that I did want to highlight, starting with Destruction All-Stars. This one deserves a special mention, not just for its generally great gameplay animation work, but also just because of the brilliant choice to have all of these colorful characters express varying flavors of disappointment when you select them and then back out to pick somebody else. Nothing makes me happier than seeing some clever team find a great opportunity for characterization that wouldn't even occur to most of us. I was also rather impressed by Life is Strange True Colors. Not because the use of performance capture is groundbreaking in any way. At least half of the other games in this category are using it too. This is not new technology. But it's not that often that you get to see such a great before and after demonstration of the difference that technology can make. The original Life is Strange had some solid motion capture work, and the sequel made a lot of big improvements to the animation of faces. But when your game is all about character emotions and how your character reacts to emotion, being able to capture each actor's body, face, and vocal performance simultaneously, with all of those natural subtleties and their shifting expressions, has an enormous impact. But if there was one game with a character performance that truly grabbed people's attention in 2021, it was Resident Evil Village. I've been giving the Resident Evil games a mention in most of these annual videos, and they deserve the recognition. But Resident Evil Village unexpectedly went and gave us something extremely rare. There just are not a lot of truly show-stealing villain performances in video games. Oh, we've got great villains for days, every possible flavor. Lovable, creepy, theatrical, you name it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of on-screen villain acting performance that truly entrances people, that is so electric and captivating to watch that they steal every shot they're in. Gaming doesn't really have many of those. I'm trying really hard to think of some candidates, and I can only come up with, like, one or two. But given the response she received from trailer footage alone, I think Lady Dimitrisque might be a strong contender. She and her daughters managed to steal the show so effectively that I still sometimes forget how small their segment of the game actually is. My compliments to everybody involved in Lady Dimitrisque's design, as well as the performers and directors and the animators who put these scenes together. This is some real lightning in a bottle y'all managed to capture. 
I also feel like I should at least mention The Matrix Awakens. I realize it's a tech demo and a largely non-interactive one, but this push Epic has been making to serve both the film and game industries simultaneously with their Unreal Engine is a fascinating development for the world of game dev technology. I mean, this one game engine is currently in widespread use by AAA studios, indie developers, and Hollywood productions. That is new and pretty wild. And I'm really excited to see what comes of this over the next five or ten years. And now for our final category. Always a personal favorite of mine. And, as with the rest of these categories, an absolute nightmare to narrow down. I mean, look at what we're dealing with here. Metroid Dread's Incarnation of Samus has some really nice gameplay movement, with posing so strong that it reads clearly no matter how tiny Samus might be in frame. Plus, there's that really inventive traversal style on the Emmy units, and some fun spectacle sequences in boss fights. Just rock-solid stuff. Or what about Ruined King? These combat animations are gorgeous. The sense of weight, the contrast between characters, the attention to arcs and posing. League of Legends is a game full of top-notch character animation, and it makes me very happy that the combat in this spin-off lives up to that established reputation. And then there are all the anime-style games that weren't made by Arc System Works. I was a bit lukewarm on a lot of the animation in games like Demon Slayer and Tales of Arise, but when it's time for some sort of ultimate attack, the choreographed spectacle these games throw at you is kind of impossible to ignore. And I do realize that the two games featured in The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles have been out in Japan for years, but now that they are finally available here, I'm including them anyway. And it sure is great seeing how much they've been honing this approach to hyper-limited animation. I did a video on this topic already, but I'm still just astonished at how much personality this series is able to convey using so few animations. Then there's Psychonauts 2, a game I still, even after finishing it, can't quite believe is actually real. There is so much entertaining personality on display here, and this distinctly double-fine animation style always brings out the most of each character's off-kilter design. The animation is zany enough to squeeze the most comedy possible out of every scene, but also sincere enough to bring genuine pathos and heartbreak out of what turned out to be some surprisingly emotional moments. But if we are going to talk about top-tier, stylized 3D animation in 2021, we are going to talk about Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Insomniac Games is a studio that invests heavily in animation tech and talent, and that investment continues to deliver results. The gameplay is gorgeous, the cinematic performances are so full of cartoon appeal, and the amount of polish on display here is a little bit out of control. Whoever is animating Nefarious is clearly having a grand time. And my special compliments to everyone involved in the creation of newcomers Rivet and Kit, because darn these two are lovable. If the next game in the series happens to star these two, I will not complain. But speaking of startling levels of polish, that brings me to Kena, Bridge of Spirits. This particular style of 3D animation, which usually gets labeled the Pixar or Disney style, for better or worse, might be everywhere in Western animated films, but it's not one we see very often in games. And for good reason, it can be really time-consuming to do it this well. Granted, you're not going to see quite the same level of technical polish from Kena as you would see in Ratchet & Clank, especially on the gameplay side of things, but still, this is an impressive looking game, and the animation on these little rot creatures is almost painfully cute. I do wish that Kena herself had a bit more personality. Her performance tends to feel pretty one-note a lot of the time, but even so, it is hard to cling to that sort of nitpick when the game makes room for stuff like this. I know that all games are going out of their way to let you pet the dog lately, but letting you park and play with your little pick minions like this in a variety of ways is really raising the bar. How can you not love this? Kana Bridge of Spirits is a heck of an opening statement from Ember Lab and their co-developers at Sparks, and I'm very excited to see what else they might have in them. But as wonderful as this sort of stylish and highly polished animation can be, it isn't right for every game. And this brings me to the last game I want to talk about today, Say No More. Say No More is a short little comedy romp about learning to stand up for yourself. And I am not joking when I tell you that of all of the incredible animation I've shown you today, this might be my 2021 favorite. Now, is the animation dead simple? Absolutely. 
Many would probably even call it bad animation, but I am here to tell you that if this animation looked more detailed or polished, more traditionally, quote, good, I have a strong suspicion that the game's comedy would not land nearly as well. Which means the animation in this game is actually perfect. And make no mistake, this simple animation is more precisely crafted than it probably looks. The snappy comic posing, the way every character walks around with this stiff strut, the attention to comedic timing, it's genuinely some of the funniest game animation I think I've ever seen. Just go and play this game for yourself and see what I mean. It's short and delightful, and I think after making it through 2021, you deserve it. There. There's all the games. And I still probably missed some. And you know what? I know I did. Even after all this effort, I'm still somehow going to discover another 2021 game with amazing animation within minutes of uploading this video. So if you know of any, post them down below so I can just start kicking myself now. I hope you have a lovely day and that this year is better than the last. Low bar to clear, I realize, but still. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a Final Fantasy animation video to get back to. I will have that and many, many more ready for you soon. So until then, bye.